Good morning, brothers and sisters. Dominic Lucero here, instructor for Local 549, Boilermakers, Pittsburgh, California. So if you've been following along in the last couple of videos that we've been doing on trigonometry, we did a very brief introduction to how trigonometry can be useful out on the job site. Uh, we talked about the tangent function, and we're going to move our way right back uh, to cosine. In my personal experience, I can typically use tangent for just about everything. Uh, because if you know a couple pieces of the puzzle with a triangle, you can find out all the pieces of the puzzle. So in my experience, I really don't use cosine a whole lot, but it's really important to understand the full spectrum of triangles and how to be able to get angles, lengths, whatever it is for any situation that you might be in. So I try to use applicable situations, and today what I have drawn up is I have a hopper panel drawn up. Now, a lot of times, if you might have found out already, blueprints can be fairly vague. The number one rule for any blueprint is you don't over clutter to print. So sometimes you're given just enough information just to get by and fabricate whatever it is you need. And some information might be omitted. So if we got a blueprint, we might be given something like the angle for the side of the hopper. And we might have to go out and field verify the rest of the dimensions. So let's say, for example, that this hopper's uh, out in the field already. We're going to be fabricating a brand new one and having to rig it up into place. So we go out there and we field verify and we can find that uh, from the top of the hopper to the bottom running along the length is going to be 18 inches. So that's the best we can do. This dimension over here might have obstructions in the way. Uh, there might be turning veins in there. There might be stiffeners on the outside. For whatever reason, we can't seem to get this dimension right here or an accurate dimension. So what are we going to do in a situation like that? So a good way to think about Sokotoa is that if we need to find an angle, we can use these two dimensions right here to find what the angle is. But if you already have the angle, uh, this turns into an algebra problem where the angle is going to equal, or the length of the leg is going to equal uh, the cosine of the angle and then multiply by one of these numbers to find the other missing number. Because the opposite of division, as it's laid out here, is going to be multiplication. So you can spin it around and find out everything that you need to know. So, as I said, we know that we have one length of 18 and an angle of 26. So what are we going to do to figure that out? So if we know that we have an adjacent and we're looking for the hypotenuse, then we're going to use the cosine function. So we have the angle. So as I stated in the other videos, what we're looking for here is the ratio. Uh, the cosine of an angle gives us the ratio for something. So on your calculators, it's going to say COS, which stands for cosine. So if we do cosine of 26, it gives us 0.898. And once again, that's our ratio. Our ratio is for every one inch over, it's going to move up, or it's going to move along the length of it, 0.898. Now, 0.898, it's not a whole number. And as we know, the hypotenuse of a triangle is always the longest length. So like we did in tangent, where we multiplied this number by that number to give us this length, we know right off the bat that's going to be incorrect. We know that this cannot be shorter than the adjacent leg right here. So what are we going to do about a thing like that? Essentially what we're saying is this length right here, if we multiplied it by 0.898 or 89%, it would give us this number. And that's a really important way to try to think about all of this. What we're saying is the adjacent leg right here is going to be 89% of the hypotenuse. So we could turn it into an algebra question. So really what we're saying is x, which would be the hypotenuse right here, times 0.898 is going to equal 18. So we need to find out what times 0.898 is going to equal 18. So the opposite of multiplication, right back to division. So if we divide 18 by 0.898, it's going to give us the length of the hypotenuse right here.
18 divided by 0.898 equals, and the answer I got is 20.044. So if we're working in units of inches, what does 0 .044 mean? Is it important? Um, we're definitely going to do a series of videos on how to convert fractions into decimals and vice versa. Uh, but if you already know your fractions into decimals, the next closest thing is 1 16th. 1 16th is 0 .0625. So we know that 0 .044 is pretty close. We could split hairs if we wanted to. It would favor the 16th side of your tape measure. And that's just to give us a very accurate angle if, if it's really required. So now that we know that our length of our hypotenuse is about 20 inches, and this is about 18 inches, what if it was the opposite? What if that we knew the length of the hypotenuse and we knew the length of the adjacent leg, but we needed to find out the angle? That's just good old fashioned trigonometry. So, As we already know, we have adjacent, we have hypotenuse. So we have the adjacent, we have the hypotenuse. So we know the function we're gonna use here is cosine. So if we divided the hypotenuse by the adjacent, it's gonna give us a number, our ratio again. So 18 divided by 20.44, excuse me, 20.044, and I'll write that out for you, 20.044 dividing 18, and the number we get out of that is 0.898. Once again, it's our ratio. What we're saying is for every one inch over in this direction, this is going to move 0.898 in that direction. Or uh, pretty much that's fairly close to 0.875, uh, which is going to be 7 eighths. So for every one inch over, it's going to move up about 7 eighths of an inch. So how do we turn 0.898 into an actual decimal or into an actual angle? Like I told you guys in the tangent video, uh, your trigonomic functions in your first year book, that big long table that has all those numbers and stuff, you can find it in there. But every calculator already has that preloaded into it, or it should on most cell phones. So if I hit inverse INV on my calculator, I'll notice next to tangent and, and cosine and sine, I end up with a negative one. And that's how I know I'm in the selection that I need for the trigonomic function. And what I'm trying to say is, if I have this ratio, what angle would that be? So I have the inverse cosine. So you want to hit COS negative 1 of 0.898. And that gives me 26.1. And of course, with decimals and stuff, it gets uh, on calculators, it puts it out about 10 decimal places. So it starts getting extremely accurate. So when we divide our adjacent by our hypotenuse, it gave us a ratio. And then I was able to plug in on my calculator what angle has that ratio assigned to it. And that's really the most important way to look at this is every angle has a ratio assigned to it. For every inch I move in one direction, and it has to go a certain distance in that direction. So that's a very applicable use of cosine. Like I said already, I, have, I don't really have to use cosine a whole lot. Um, but one last thing, I keep telling you, if, if you have a little piece of the triangle, you can figure out the rest of it. So if we know that this angle right here is 26.1, and we know that this angle here, uh, which is our imaginary hidden line, if we know that's a 90 degree angle, we can figure out this angle right here. So, back to good old fashioned a square or um, 100, 
180 degrees inside every triangle. So we have 90 degrees. And just for simplicity's sake, we'll keep this at 26. Well, we know that this angle plus that angle equals 116 degrees. Now, if we subtract that from the total amount of angle inside a triangle, which is 180 degrees, we find out that the missing angle in here is 54 degrees. So we're almost completely solved for this entire triangle. But what if we wanted to know the leg? It might be a lot easier to lay this, uh, this trapezoid out if we know what this leg is. Because if we know that's 18, we have a right angle, and we come up a certain amount, if we connect that line with that line, it's going to automatically give us our 26 degrees that we're looking for. So we're back to the Pythagorean theorem. So a squared plus b squared equals c squared. So we have a squared, which would be 18, but we don't have b squared, but we do have what the square root of c squared would be right here on our hypotenuse. So once again, it turns into an algebra problem. And it's a very easy algebra problem to solve. Okay. So we know that 18 times 18, not times two, it's going to give us 324. So that is 18 squared. And we know that 20.044 is the square root of the number that we have to have here. So we can just re-square 20.044. We'll keep it at 20 just to keep things nice and even. So 20 times 20 gives us 400. So we know 324 plus something will give us 400. So now if we just subtract 324 from 400, that will give us our missing length that's up there. So it's telling us that our, the squared amount of this leg right here is going to equal 76. And now, please keep in mind, that's the squared version of it. So now we have to find out what the square root of 76 is. And that is 8.71. So this leg right here equals 8.71, fairly close to eight and three quarter. So if we laid out our 18 inch line right here, and then we laid out our eight and three quarter inch roughly line up here, we connected the two dots. That would give us a 26 degree angle off the base or a 54 degree angle off the top. So it's really not that simple. The hardest thing is knowing which function does what and when it's the appropriate time to use it. So I hope this was helpful. We're going to have more videos about trigonometry coming out soon uh, to help get you guys through a lot of the job site situations that you might be in. If you ever have any questions or any difficulties, please come by the training center anytime. I'm happy to sit down with you and we'll make sure that you get the education you deserve. So thank you.